Hello, my friends. We are going to do a really fun project. This is called paper mache. And it means to take either glue and paper, or we're going to make our own glue out of water and flour. Just regular flour that's in the kitchen that you make breads and cookies and cakes with. We're going to mix them together. They're going to make something gooey. And we're gonna make a little dinosaur egg. Oh, it's so much fun. And in fact, I'm gonna make that egg for this little dinosaur right here. We're gonna pretend that that's the egg that he hatches out of. Are you ready for this fun project? Okay, let's begin. All right, first thing is we need to make our paste, we're gonna call it, instead of glue, our paste. Let me pull up my sleeves. Now, nothing that we're doing today is gonna to ruin anything or stain anything, so it won't come out in the wash, so you don't have to worry about that, but it is gooey and your fingers do get kind of, they get all, not really sticky, but they definitely get coated in some of this paste. It's really fun and so cool. So I'll take the water, and I'm gonna pour some of it in here. There's not exact measurements. You don't wanna to add too much water at the very start because, well, you could, and then you just add more flour, but usually I don't wanna to add too much water at the very start because I know I can always add a little more water, little more water, little more water. I'll show you what I mean. So I've added the water to the flour and I'm mixing, oh, it's starting to get gooey in there. And I can see that I am going to need to add some more um, water into my flour. So here comes a little bit more water. All right, and just gently, if I really started getting strong and just going at it, I would splash all over. And I don't want to do that. Do you know why I don't want to do that? Because I don't want to clean that up after. And it's the same at your house. You're not going to want to clean it up after. And your mom's not going to want to clean it up after. So you just mix really gently and you don't be in too big of a hurry. Okay, here we go. And I can see we're going to need even more water. All right. It's coming in, coming in. All right. Oh, yeah. Starting to look more like paste. Can't be in a hurry on this part. You just have to be patient. And just keep mixing and mixing. Do you like to mix things? You do? I do too. And sometimes it's just fun to mix things like a little bit of sand and water together. Or have you ever made little mud pies? I remember when I was little, me and my friends would be outside and we'd take a little bit of dirt and some water and we would make mud pies. Do you think we ate the mud pies? You're right. We did not eat the mud pies. Okay, this is looking good. But still, I want it even a little more runny than this. So here comes some more water. All right. Now for this project, besides water, you're going to, and flour, you need water, flour, you'll need some paper. And back when I was teaching in my classroom, we always used newspaper. But it's hard to find newspaper anymore. So if you do have newspaper, or maybe one of your grandmas and grandpas have newspaper, have them save them because they do really well with this project. But I'm just going to use regular copy paper, printer paper, just like probably what you'll have. You can also use scraps. You know how I love using scraps that would normally just go into the trash, but they get an extra little chance at something. You'll also need a balloon 
and I have two balloons. I don't know if you have seen the class that's about air, but it's so silly. On that class, I just had one balloon. And so I was showing how I was blowing up the balloon with the air that's in my body. And I started to blow it and something must have been wrong with that balloon. And it popped. <laughs> it surprised me so much. And um, I didn't have another balloon. So I couldn't even show how I could blow up a balloon <laughs> with the air. But today I have two balloons in case that happens again. And I can blow up the second one. All right. So look how, see how that's running off of there? That's how we want it. Not super, super runny, just like water. We need to have it like a paste. All right. So I'm going to sit this right here to the side and take the balloon. I'm going to do red first. And maybe that's the color. I don't need a very big egg for this little guy, do I? No. So I am going to just blow it up a little bit. Here I go. Oh, big air. What do you think? Is that too big? Is it too small? It takes longer. The bigger I get it, it will take longer for me to make this paper mache egg. Maybe I'll let, let a little bit of air out. All right, here I go. If I let go of this right now, just all the way let go, it would fly around the room. Have you ever done that with a balloon? You blow it up and then you just let go right here and it all over the room. It's so fun, but I don't want it to go all over the room. Okay, now that's making a fun shape right there. Let's see. Maybe a little more brown. Yeah, I think I'll do it like that. That'll be my size. This part right here, and even the blowing up of the balloon, you might need your adult with you to do that. All right, so here's our balloon. And now we need, I'm going to move our water container over here because we don't need it anymore. And then I think my balloon wants to roll off the table. Ah, oh, okay. And I don't need this one because the red one didn't pop. So good job. Good job, red balloon. All right. Now we just tear strips of paper. Not too big, not too small, just right. All right, here comes some more. You could cut it, but I think it's fun to tear. So you'll decide what's going to be the most fun for you. You need quite a bit. You don't want to have holes in your dinosaur egg. You want to be able to cover that whole balloon. All right. Do you wonder how are we going to get that dinosaur inside there? <laughs> you do? Well, I'm going to show you at the end of this video. It's pretty fun. All right. This is one piece of paper. Should I do another piece of paper? I think so, too. You're right. We should have at least two pieces of paper for this size of a dinosaur egg. Oh, I have an idea. This will help me go a little bit faster. And this way, I'll for sure have enough. What if I try to tear two pieces of paper at one time? All right, let's try it. Here we go. So I just stack them together. So it's kind of like they're one, but there's really two of them there. And I start tearing. Oh, it works! I can tear two pieces of paper at the same time. That means I'm going to have it done faster. Okay. There we go. Another tear. Okay. Let's tear this from this direction. Probably two more big tears. And then some little ones. And we will be ready to go. Okay, here's our, here's our pile of paper. Now, something tricky that 
that you want to be careful and do not do is gather up two of them at the same time when you put them in the paste. Okay, so remember that, that you just want to make sure that you just have one of them. Ah, I feel my sleeves rolling down again. Maybe I'll move this out of the way. It's a big, it's a big thing. I'm going to move it over here on my paper so it makes it easy to clean up when I am done. Quick cleanup. Ah, oh, that's the key to all good projects. Just think ahead and have quick cleanup. Boom, right there. Okay, here's our first one, ready to go. So fun. Now you can decide what temperature you want your water. Mine was just what's called room temperature. It wasn't hot and it wasn't cold. And I'm gonna get paste on both sides. Okay, there it is, just like that. Just kind of spread it out. Want it kind of flat. Um, it'll be a little lumpy. You don't want it too lumpy. Here comes another one. Oh, it's two of them. One's got to wait. It's turn. Go along. All right. Okay, while I'm doing this, I'm going to play a little music for you to listen to as you watch me finish this paper mache. way done now. So I've got it as close to the tie right here, the knot, as I could. It's really ooey gooey. You can see that. I don't want to be able to see any of the balloon. So I've tried my very best to not have any balloon showing. Okay, kind of smooth some things out. I have two cups here. And I turned them upside down. I don't know. Maybe this way is the better way to do it. Okay. I think I'll do it this way. Not upside down, but right side up. And I'm going to rest it on the cup. Okay. Resting. Just like that. It's going to take hmm, at least probably two nights two sleeps before this totally dries. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do some other special things with it. Are you excited to see that? Okay, keep watching and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Welcome back, my friends. Okay, here we have the egg. Mine has all these different colors on it because we started with the white paper and then I put this so I could dry it a little bit faster. I put it close to the fireplace and had the fan on and I think it kind of cooked the flower a little bit and turned it brown but I love how this looks it has the white and that that goldeny brown color but you could paint yours if you wanted to and you would just need to leave it and sit it very carefully for probably two more sleeves so that's your choice whether you just leave it like it looks with the paper mache, or you can paint over the top of it. 
So anyway, the next step in this is that you take where your tie is, right there where the knot is, and you're going to hold it very carefully and then take a pin. Or you could take some scissors and cut very carefully in there, but I'm going to pop it with a pin, just like this, that balloon is going to get popped. Oh, I thought it would make a popping sound, but it's not really. There's a crackling sound as I'm getting into the, to the paper mache right there. But the air starts coming out and the balloon starts deflating. That means the air is making it, because it's losing its air, it's getting smaller and smaller. All right. It's ever so gently. Sometimes, every once in a while, it's really hard to get the balloon to release from the paper mache. Let me see, what if I poke my pin in the bottom a little bit? Maybe, I don't know. Other times, I have just left my balloon inside there. Okay, I don't want to pop and pull out a bigger hole than this right here. So I'm just going to say goodbye to that balloon. It's going to go inside there. Let me hear. Nope, can't even hear the balloon in there. And then in this little hole right here, I am going to take this cute little dinosaur and I'm going to put him in there. Okay. Now, when the dinosaur egg is laid, of course, there wouldn't be a little hole in here. So I pretend that he started to push his way and crack through this hole. Now, let's listen and see if we can hear the dinosaur in there. Can you hear that noise? That's the dinosaur shaking around in there. So you'll decide, when do I want to... Um, crack open this egg and get the dinosaur back out. Should we do it right now here in class together on my egg? Okay, let's do it. So I will just start at the top right here and start pulling. Oh, it's opening up big, pretending that it's the dinosaur that's doing all this cracking. And right inside there, we find the balloon, take that out, put it right there, and the little dinosaur. Oh, I hope you can see that. Oh, it's so cute, the way it's laying in there. And then I can pretend that I have a little pet dinosaur. Give it a try. <laughs> 